Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to talk about how to set boundaries around your digital tools. And I know that this is a hard one, but let's go. So today's age, it's all about digital spaces, social media spaces, spaces um, group online group spaces. There's lots of online activity now. And in order to get out there and be heard is to be in these digital spaces. And it's quite exhausting sometimes, right? We don't need to feel like we have to show up every single day though. Um, these spaces are a privilege, right? And I feel that we constantly are pressured to show up online and we don't really have to. We have to empower ourselves to give ourselves the distance that we need in order to thrive on a good note and to stay mentally well through, you know, marketing and promoting and, you know, socializing. It's very exhausting. So I'm going to share a couple of ways that you can find control and set boundaries on those digital tools so you could still be productive, but also give yourself time away from the digital, digital devices. So the first way that I would like to present to you is to set a schedule, a schedule where in the week, you designate time blocks within your week. So maybe every day at 11 a.m. to noon, you look on your social media and you reply to messages, etc. Now, you don't have to do it every single day in that time block. You can make it Mondays. So Mondays, you reply to all of your social media um, responses, uh, any postings that you have to do, or any collaborations you want to set up, you have it all here. So this is me basically telling you guys that you don't have to show up every single day, but it's up to you, right? You are your own boss you set the schedule for what is best for you. So really monitor yourself throughout the week. How busy are you on social media? Is it Wednesdays? Is it Monday? Is it every single day? But time block it. You don't have to be on social media for eight hours a day. It's just not uh, productive enough. So um, some apps that I would suggest to help uh, alleviate any kind of addiction to these uh, social media platforms is uh, one that's called anti-social uh, it's on androids only but it gives you the advantage to block apps for a certain amount of time it also um, monitors your time on the apps as well so if, uh, if you're trying to track uh, how your progression is through the week and you want to set a schedule like that, I think that uh, app will be very helpful to you. Uh, there's another app that uh, one of my therapist friends shared to me. Um, it's called uh, Opal and this is only for Apple users, but this app also does the same and it monitors your time. It uh, blocks out uh, certain apps for a certain amount of time that you set it for. And it also locks you out of your phone when uh, you're trying to be productive. So very amazing boundaries uh, these two apps give you. And I suggest you try them out. And I mean, it's not for everybody, but if it helps you get started trying to reorganize your life again, because you're constantly on these uh, platforms and it's taking away, you know, your valuable time to be productive, then I would suggest trying these out. Um, I think 
Opal, you can try for free, I think for the first 14 days, I believe. So try that out for Apple users. In terms of antisocial for Android users, you can have it for free. There are just some minor uh, premium uh, options that you can unlock if you buy premium. But I mean, get started with them first to see if it's something that you like. I wouldn't just buy it off the spot. Um, see if it works for you because there's other different techniques out there to help monitor your time. Way number two is content batching. So social media is all about building content and showcasing it to the world, right? And what I would suggest that you do to set some boundaries for yourself is to only do one day in the week of content batching. If you're trying to make content for your people, dedicate eight hours in one day to get all the content done, at least for the next two weeks or one week, depending on how you set things up for your schedule. But doing everything in one day is much better than trying to stretch it out throughout the week because you might get caught up in something else and then you'll forget to do the content or it'll be the other way around where you're too in getting too deep into content batching that you're forgetting all the other stuff that has to be done in your business. So a lot of different ways to approach this, but in my opinion, I would do one day a week of content batching and schedule everything in. So when I what I mean with scheduling is use the apps to help schedule your posts way in advance so that the apps will post the content for you. So you don't have to go in there every single day, be exposed to social media and post your content and then get distracted again. So this is just what I'm saying in terms of setting boundaries. So there's some scheduling apps out there already. They give you um, maybe like the first 10 posts a month uh, to be able to automate and post automatically on your page. But it really depends on what you're looking for. If you're trying to post to multiple accounts as well. So uh, some of the apps that are out there is called later.com. And they're pretty good for uh, posting uh, Instagram uh, posts and carousels. Um, I think they also uh, link to other accounts as well. So if you're trying to post to other different accounts, I believe it can do that as well. I don't know if it's for free though. Um, and then the next one is Buffer. Buffer is another one that I played around with in the past. And for sure, I know that one gives you at least another account uh, to play with for free. And then if you want to add more accounts, that's just obviously some money that you'll have to put down. And I believe there's preview is what it's called. And that has the same scenario. So these uh, apps are all quite similar. It really depends on, you know, what you like best, what platform, you know, is easy to understand and easy to work with uh, your system. But I suggest that you systemize all your work so that you're less on social media and you're able to focus on the most important things in your business. So way number three, I would, I would say um, we need to limit our screen time. And maybe what you do is you set a max time of screen time each day. So maybe you max it to four hours a day so you're only using your computer, your phone, uh, iPad, all those things, four hours a day. And then your mind starts to really focus on what is priority, right? What is going to bring me value during the four hours of screen time, okay? Um, there's a, there's a lot of people out there that are usually working heavy eight hours on the computer. And 
are they really being productive? That's kind of the question, right? Because sometimes our digital devices could mindlessly drag us out into all these different links and more links. And then you kind of get lost in terms of what you are actually doing. So I would suggest that you take some time to monitor how you work uh, digitally throughout the week and calculate uh, an approximate amount of time that you think you can get enough done in a day and then cut off the computer time and do other things. So these are things that um, we have to find control over because unfortunately the digital spaces, they brainwash you and manipulate you all the time. So you have to be super careful with the time that you spend on there because time flies when you're on these devices and we don't need to be dragging ourselves out that far. So take some time to journal, find out a really good um, amount of time to use each day on the computer and set that limit. So if you have like a time tracking journal, that might help you. Uh, that's what I've been doing personally. I have a little uh, notepad on my desk and what I do is I log in um, how much time I was on the computer for. And I use a, um, a timer in my, my top right of my screen. Uh, the timer that I use is called Flow. And what Flow does is it tells me my intervals. So I give myself 20 minutes intervals. And what I do within that 20 minutes is I set a goal of what I want to do in those 20 minutes. Okay, I want to finish this email to a potential client. Done. And then when 20 minutes is over, I take a 10 minute break. And this is how I'm able to kind of uh, shift my attention between focusing intensely and then break, rest my eyes, rest my hands and wrists and walk away from the computer. And then I go for another 20. And what I do is I keep track of how long I, I take to do work so that I'm able to calculate, okay, this, if I do this within 20 minutes, it should be fine. Um, if I'm doing, let's just say some intense client work, then I make sure I block out um, an hour um, in my day, yes, you know, this is going to take a little bit to do some photo research for the client. So I'm going to make sure that I, I um, delegate one hour on a Tuesday to do the image research. So the timer um, on my screen that I use each day really helps me keep track of how long I've been on the computer for and how much work I can get done within that interval. And I found that I was more productive that way and I was less distracted of jumping on Facebook or jumping on Instagram or jumping on YouTube. Um, it really helped me just laser focus on what matters. So I hope that that helps. Um, I'm going to share the next. So way number four to remove any, you know, notifications that can bother you. And I know on your phone, and on your iPad, I don't know about the computer though, I think you can in the browser, but you want to remove uh, push notifications. So what I mean by that is when you go on your phone, your phone gives you a, like a, a ping, like a, a noise to say, hey, I have an, a, a notification and I want you to look at me, <laughs> but you don't have to, to um, let that happen. You can turn those off on your phone and you can also turn it off on your web browser and your iPad because you don't have to be notified all the time, right? In your set week, you're going to set a time block when you're going to go on social media, when you're going to do this and when you're going to do that. So I found when I removed the notifications, the push notifications, I was able to focus more and be less uh, 
impulsive to picking up my phone and looking at my message. So that's very helpful. Um, I would suggest you give that a try and see how it goes for you. So way number five. So this one is, um, it's going to take some time because it is going to require you to scroll through your followings, but I would take the time to remove anybody that's in your feed that's bringing you any kind of negative connotations because you're trying to run a business here as therapists and you cannot have people, um, you know, sharing information that brings you down or makes you uncomfortable, uh, makes you angry. It has to be a positive space for you. So take the time, you know, within your social media time days that you're going to block out to remove these accounts and stick with people that really are positive, at least keeping you going, right? If it's other therapists, okay. Um, if it's maybe some of your ideal clients and maybe, you know, their um, interests are your interests, then I would keep them. But again, these are people in your network that maybe you just kind of followed in the past, but maybe they don't spark joy anymore. So maybe those are uh, signs to remove those people. And this is just all about refreshing the page and just cleaning things up that really don't serve you anymore. And you'll see a big difference. So the last one, way number six, and this one by far has really helped me out a lot, especially because I work on the computer a lot. Um, it's basically a Google extension. This Google Chrome extension is called Social Feed Eradicator. It's absolutely amazing. And you do need Google Chrome for this. So Safari, it won't work in Safari and it won't work uh, in Firefox or uh, Internet Explorer. This is uh, exclusive to uh, Google Chrome. And this Eradicator uh, plugin helps to remove your feed that you get. So when you open up Instagram, you see everybody's posts right away. This extension plugin removes all of that, all the feeds. So you don't see anything when you come to your page. It's going to leave you a beautiful quote that's positive, uplifting, and it, um, it just sparks your day. I mean, I really enjoy it. And they, these are quotes from inspiring people. And I think that's a great feature. And if you do want to see your feed again, you just have to switch on and off the buttons in the plugin, but you can also just search the person's name or go to the explore tab um, within uh, Instagram. But it's a very powerful tool. I absolutely love it. Uh, it does not have the option on phone yet um, or iPad, but it's really good for computers. So if you're on the computer a lot and you find that you're pulsively going to Instagram and Facebook all the time, I would suggest downloading this uh, social feed eradicator. It will save you a lot, trust me. <laughs> and all right, that's, uh, that's it for today. So thank you so much for tuning in on today's video. I think this one was very empowering and transformative. We are all looking to improve our online presence but at the same time, keep our headspace in check and not feel fatigue when jumping online, nor wasting time. We need to be productive, especially when we're trying to run our own private practices. So again, thank you so much for tuning in today, and I hope that you have a wonderful day and keep smiling. Bye!